Good to be with you again, New Hope family. I wanted to share with you a hymn today that perhaps is a little less known in our church, albeit still a marvelous, rich hymn of our church. It's entitled The Love of God and written by Frederick M. Lehman. In researching the background of both the hymn and the lyric contributors, I found some discrepancies in the details. However, every source I found articulates Frederick Lehman and his daughter writing the love of God came upon the lyrics to their hymn's third verse. These lyrics are clearly traced back to Rabbi Meyer ben Isaac Nohorai. The following is one of these stories. As Frederick Lehman and his daughter, Mrs. W.W. W. Mays, worked together on compiling a new hymn entitled The Love of God, they suffered from writer's block after having penned only two stanzas. The year was 1917, and at that time you simply had to have three complete verses reflecting the Trinity, or you didn't have a song. The Akdamut Milan is an 11th century Hebrew poem that was written by Rabbi Meyer ben Isaac Nahorai, a cantor or synagogue singer. He was from Worms, Germany. The poem's title can be literally translated as, quote, introductory words, end quote. And its first line reads before reading the Ten Divine Commands. This poem was used during the festival or Feast of Weeks. Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, is celebrated seven weeks after Passover. Since the counting of this period begins on the second evening of Passover, Shavuot takes place exactly 50 days after the cedar. Hence, following the Greek word for 50, Shavuot is also referred to sometimes as Pentecost. Although its origins are to be found in an ancient grain harvest festival, Shavuot has long been identified with the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. In fact, it does combine two major religious observances. First, the grain harvest of the early summer. Second, the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai seven weeks after the exodus from Egypt. The first determines the ritual for the holiday, which was one of the three pilgrimage festivals of ancient Israel, when Israelite males were commanded to appear before God in Jerusalem, bringing offerings of the first fruits of their harvest. The second determines the significance of the holiday for Judaism, tying it in with the seminal event of Jewish religious memory, namely the entering into a covenant between God and Israel, exemplified by Israel's assumption of divine law, including the Ten Commandments. The second stanza of Akdamut Milan appears this way in the Jewish prayer book. At God's command is infinite power, which words cannot define. Were all the skies parchment, and all the reeds pens, and all the oceans ink, and all who dwell on earth scribes, God's grandeur could not be told. Those words were reformed and placed as the third verse in this great hymn, The Love of God, and they read this way. Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. It is clear to me that for generation after generation, millennia upon millennia, as humans, we have been attempting to articulate how vast and how deep and how immeasurable God's love is. In fact, that's the thing. It is immeasurable. Our words cannot contain or clearly articulate and define the great love of God. 
So would you lift your voice with me? This might be the first time that you've sung this song. Great hymn of the church, the love of God. Let's worship together. Yeah. 